Okay, this lecture is called Community Corrections. Um, what we're going to do is learn a little bit about the sentences. They're basically sentences that allow you not to be in prison or jail where you're not locked up. So basically you've been convicted by a court of law, but you're in the community under some form of supervision. And you'll see there are various kinds. Okay, so basically here's a um, a book definition of community corrections, but real basically I want to let you know the difference between probation and parole. Okay, probation means that you were caught by the cops. Um, they charged you, so your case went to the court system. So there's three levels of the criminal justice. There's police, courts, and corrections. Okay, so you have to be arrested by the cops. You have to be convicted by the courts. Most, the vast majority of criminal convictions in the United States, something like 95% of them are not the result of a trial. They are the result of a plea bargain. Okay, so most people don't sort of have their day in court. Their attorneys make a deal on the side. Okay, so you are convicted and then a judge will sentence you. And then once you're sentenced, you go into the correction system. Okay, so for probation, the judge sentences you to probation. And what that means is you're not going to go to jail or prison. And he's going to, as long as you're a good little boy or girl in the community and follow the rules, you're never going to be locked up. Okay. Parole refers to prison. Okay. And you're only in prison for what's called a felony. So you would be convicted of a felony, either mostly by plea bargain again, by the courts and then you would be sentenced to prison. So usually fe uh, felonies have a, uh, can have a sentence. If you're going to be sent to be incarcerated, um, generally speaking, you will go to prison for at least a year, okay, which is different from, than jail. Um, <clears throat> jail is, generally speaking, you're there before trial uh, because they don't think you're, you will come for trial, and so it's called pre-trial incarceration. About half people in jail are for that. The other half, about, are there for they've been convicted of a crime that's not a felony, and so they're serving a sentence of less than a year. Generally speaking, that's a difference between jail and prison. So to be on parole, you must have been in prison. That means you had a felony conviction. So you're locked up for a certain amount of time. And then they let you out early of prison to be in the community under a set of restrictive conditions, which is called parole. Okay, so I used to always get them mixed up. But remember, probation, you never get locked up. Parole, you were locked up in prison first, not jail. And they let you out early to do the rest of your sentence in the community under certain restricted conditions. Okay, basically what I want you to know about the philosophy of probation, um, it was started by this priest dude back in the early 1800s by John Augustus. Um, the whole idea, though, is based upon rehabilitation, okay? So the underlying theoretical idea is that the offender can be rehabilitated and the community corrected, excuse me, protected from close supervision, okay? So, for example, one of the knocks about prison is it messes you up so bad. It puts you in an extremely criminogenic environment, okay? where you're surrounded by a bunch of criminals and it damages you in such a way that you don't know how to live in life once you get out. That's very true for many people. Okay, so one of the ideas is that it's better if we don't lock people up and we rehabilitate them in the communities because it's easier to rehabilitate somebody if they've never been locked up before. So that's obviously it's not true for everybody, but it's, for the group, it's true. Okay, the other philosophy behind it is that it's much cheaper. Think about it. If you're out on probation, you're living in your house or apartment, and so the state is not paying for you 365, 24-7. They don't have to house you. They don't have to feed you. They don't have to give you medical care, etc. Okay, so it's much, much, much cheaper. Um, so that should sort of make sense. Um, the other thing is to let you know, that's probably the reason why it's the most widely used criminal sanction. So when you look at everybody under the correction system, 
about 58% of them, that's almost 60%, almost two thirds, right, are on probation. Just so you know, about 22% are in prison. Parole is about 11% and jail is about 10%. All I want you to know for the purpose of this lecture is by far and away, people on probation are the biggest group in the correction system. And that sort of 58%, 60% in there, that stayed really, really, really constant over time. So um, I started this in the 2000s like right around 2000 teaching this course, and it's remained the same for over 20 years. You know, a little fluctuations up and down, but latest information is it's still at about 58%. Okay, much larger than um, prisons, jails, and probation. Excuse me, parole. Sorry about that. Okay, so basically, um, when you are sentenced to probation, you have some sort of a, a report called a pre-probation report, sometimes called a pre-sentence report, okay? And it sort of looks at your background and your history, and that helps the judge um, or the probation officer set the conditions of probation, okay? There are standard conditions of probation. The first one is don't commit any new crimes, okay? Don't get arrested for any new crimes. Um, and then there's some other what are called technical um, conditions, for example, meet with your probation officer on time. If they say that you need to go to drug treatment, you need to go there. If they say they want to pee test you for drugs, you need to um, go there and do your, your, your uh, urine test, stuff like that. Um, there's also something called intensive super probation, which is just what it sounds like. They make you check in more often. Um, they make you jump more hoops, if you will. So pretend you need to get P-tested. Um, they're going to P-test you a lot more, right? If you need to meet with your probation officer, you're going to have to meet them a lot more, okay? Um, when they revoke probation, the key is that generally, so when you're on probation, you have what's called a probation officer. That's a person who oversees your probation, Okay. They're going to make the decision whether or not to start the process of revoking your probation. Okay, they can't do it by themselves. It is the court that actually does that, but they have a lot of discretion. Um, so, for example, a parole officer could decide, well, I'm going to let you be late or miss a few of our meetings, but if you do it too much, that's going to be enough, and then I'm going to start the process of revoking your probation. Um the same could be for sort of PP tests, right? I should say drug tests that are done by urine. Okay, they might oversee, they might overlook one or two of them, but once they start the process of revocation, um, they sort of do the paperwork and it's decided upon by the judge. Okay, so the probation officers have a huge amount of discretion, okay, whether or not that process is going to start. Okay, parole. Just like we thought, just like I said earlier, it's the early re supervised early release from incarceration from prison. Okay, so basically you get out of prison early. And so pretend you had a sentence of four years, maybe you do two years. Um, you're a good little boy or girl in prison and they decide to let you out for the next two years to do the last two years of your sentence in the community. You would be on parole. Okay, so basically if you don't commit any crimes and you follow the rules, very similar to... Um, the, the technical rules of parole are very similar to probation. You're going to need to meet with your parole officer. If you need to go to drug treatment, you're going to need to do that. If you need to either have a job or be looking for a job, um, if you need to get drug um, tested, you need to show up for those and pass them, etc. Okay. And most of all, don't commit a new crime. Okay. So if you commit a new crime, you can have your parole revoked. Usually that's a, a pretty good sign that they'll do that. Um, but if you violate one of the technical conditions of parole, for example, you don't meet, you just keep blowing off meetings or drug tests or whatever, that's called violating you for technical reasons. Most people on parole are violated for technical reasons, not because they go out and commit a new crime. That's very important if you think about it. Um, 
I want to explain two different versions of what they call street time and dead time about parole. Okay, so pretend you had a sentence of four years, okay, in prison. You do two years, okay? So now you think of it, you owe the state two more years. So they let you out early. You mess up immediately. Do the, If they give you credit for those, and they're going to send you back to prison, okay? You mess up, they're going to send you back to prison. Do, do you owe the state for that time that you were on the street? I guess a better example would be, I have four years, I do two in prison, they let me out, I do one on the street. Okay, so that's three years total of my four years originally, right? I mess up, it's called being rolled up, just so you know from the street. Um, and they're gonna send you back to prison. So do you get credit for that one year on the street? Or do they make you sort of start at zero and say, no, you only get credit for those first two years that you were in prison. So if you get credit for that one year on the street and you only owe one year, that's called street time. You get credit for that one year on the street. Dead time means, no, you don't get credit for that one year. You did two years. Even though you did one year on the street, you owe us that one year again. So it depends on the jurisdiction. Okay. There are three ways to be discharged from parole. You max out your sentence time. Okay. So if you had four years, they let you out after two. You do two good years on parole, then you're done. Okay, your sentence is done. You're a free person. Um, you can get discharged early from parole for doing really, really well. That can be attractive because um, the case levels, the case management is really, really difficult. Um, in plain English, parole officers have a lot of people to supervise, and maybe they're going to decide since they can't meet with them all. If you do, you know, good for that first year, maybe we'll let you out. That would be, not, you know, determined by a judge. Um, and then you could be parted, pardoned or commutation of sentences by a governor if you are in prison for a state-level crime, which the vast majority of prisoners, most of the street crimes you can think of, murder, assault, stealing, rape, all those are state crimes. That's why you'd be pardoned or have a commutation of your sentence by the governor, okay? It's only in certain federal crimes that um, you can be pardoned by the president. So the president cannot, the president of the United States cannot pardon you for a state-level crime. He can only pardon you for a federal-level crime, which is why you would be pardoned or commutated by the governor. Okay, there's other kinds of community corrections and sentences. Um, the cool thing about these is they're exactly what you might imagine. When you hear home furlough, you're basically allowed to go home for a certain amount of time. Sometimes you can go home for the weekend and come back. Sometimes they will allow you to um, be at home with a little uh, monitor on your ankle. Okay, work release, that's just what you might think. They might let you out of jail to go release, excuse me, work. And uh, you come back and spend the night there. Um, study release, it doesn't have to be college or high school, right? I, I'd imagine, you know, most people in jail are 18, right? So they're not going to send them to high school with other high school kids. But you could go to a GED program, maybe, or you could go to a community college, study welding, something like that. Um, or, of course, you could go to a community college and study English, per perhaps. Okay, so they're just what they sound like. All right, that's the end of the lecture.